So welcome everybody. Um, I wanna welcome those who are just joining us to the Thursday Amherst Community Chat. Today we have uh, Senior Services, Director of Senior Services, Mary Beth Ogalewitz and Assistant Town Manager and Director of Conservation and Development, David Zomek, joining myself, Brianna and your Town Manager, Paul Balkelman. So before we, um, we launch into questions from the room um, and those that have been submitted, I wanna give uh, Paul Bachelman a chance to give any updates he has. So thanks Brianna and thanks for doing this and thanks to our guests today. They have a lot, they are here um, mainly because they're addressing the most current things. So I'm just gonna hope that they can launch right into what's happening. There's a lot of things happening and they're, they're both at the center of it. So I don't have anything to add to, to, add to that. Okay, so with that being said, I'd give um, both David and Mary Beth a chance to introduce themselves for those who, who do not know them. So David, why don't you um, start off? Sure, good afternoon, everybody. Dave Zomak, Assistant Town Manager. I'm happy to be here today with you all and uh, talk about a variety of different town projects. Um, my job is uh, uh, exciting every day, a chance to work with a number of different departments collaboratively and with uh, residents and committees and boards. So. Um, when, when the time is right here today, love to update you on a few, few projects we're working on. Great, thank you. And Mary Beth, if you don't mind introducing yourself and any updates that you might wanna share. Sure, good afternoon, everyone. Mary Beth Ogilevitz here, Director of Senior Services. And we have a couple of things that are pressing that are happening. First of all, um, if you are interested to engage in in-person early voting, please come down to the Bang Center. So we are open seven days a week for in-person early voting, including on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, during the week, the hours are eight to 4.30. This morning when I was here, uh, probably by 7.45, we've had a line forming outside the door. We've had a really robust response. I, I think it's really quite unprecedented, but uh, we have um, a capacity to really safely make sure that you can cast your vote in person should you choose to do so. Um, we have a number of poll workers who are here. They're cleaning the area after each person votes. <laughs> <laughs> and I know it. Here we go. I'm going to keep sorry, persons. Um, so they're cleaning. They're cleaning pens and pencils. They're cleaning the voting ballot areas, uh, admitting persons one at a time. So they really have some wonderful protocols in place. People have remarked uniformly that they feel very safe. Okay, <laughs> um, voting. So. Uh, this is the challenge of having a, having a live broadcast here. So um, <laughs> please do come down and vote and uh, don't forget to come here to the Bang Center. The entrance is through the front door only. And then uh, more importantly, uh, if you had a chance to read uh, the Gazette today, we have some really exciting news working in cooperation with the Unitarian Universalist Society and Craig's Doors that we were able to announce that we're providing a new location for a shelter that will be open and available 24 seven for those who are experiencing homelessness. And this has been an incredible endeavor really led by Kevin Noonan who was unable to be with us today, but Kevin Noonan's the executive director at Craig's door and has done a really phenomenal job of reinventing shelter services during COVID. He's had to face a number of challenges around uh, safely spacing people, which caused and prompted uh, us to assist him in looking at some other venues. Uh, they have been located, as many of you are well aware, at the First Baptist Church for a lengthy period of time, but the site was, uh, that footprint was really too small to accommodate the number that we anticipate. So the Unitarian Universalist Society have welcomed uh, Kevin to uh, locate the shelter this season there, and we're very excited. It's going to improve services in a number of ways. Most importantly, it will be open and available 24-7, so our guests will be able to be housed um, and, and have a really safe space for an entire day, so it's not going to be just an overnight experience. And with that comes a whole host of of healthy outcomes that we think we'll be able to produce for those residents. So the town's been working, we've been advocating for resources, we've been a partner and an ally around securing public health resources to make sure that it's a safe setting. Everything from testing to working with code enforcement and the fire department emergency management. So we're really hoping that this provides another opportunity and some momentum for some safe uh, 
safe location and also some healthy outcomes for the entire community. I just want to add on that Dave and uh, Mary Beth were the lead for the town on this and just a number of steps and then um, number of uh, amount of work it takes to get to this, this meeting with the church, meeting with the entire congregation of the church. And again, you know, credit to Kevin Noonan and Craig Storrs uh, board for um, pushing this forward. They really um, have just done incredible work to get to where we are today. And we were happy to have been provided to provide some support along the ways as well. Great. Thank you for that for that update. Dave, is there anything in that vein that you wanted to um, add on? about that? I think Mary Beth covered it very nicely, but um, yeah, it's been a team effort and, and a collaborative effort and, and it feels really good. Um, we're not there yet, but we are, the, the pieces are coming together for, for November 1. So we're feeling very good about it. And uh, as I said on an earlier call this morning, all of this is really, it, it's a marathon, not a sprint. So we are we're in this together with Greg's Doors and, and lots of partners in the community. The UU has been fantastic. So um, we just got to keep pushing forward. And so do you think they'll open November November 1st, which is a, a Sunday? Do you think they'll open on time? They'll hit that dark target? Mary Beth? Um, I'm very hopeful. I, I am hopeful. We We've got a few last things that we're still pinning down, but that is certainly the target. Uh, they are hiring staff and doing, we're all doing what's required to get it to lift off. So that is the intention. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I guess the only thing, you know, just to, to as Paul said, this is uh, multiple people, both inside the town, uh, you know, uh, services, as well as uh, Craig's doors. Um, but, you know, uh, a lot of credit to uh, inspection services and fire department. Um, you know, these facilities need to be ready to serve the function that, that we're asking them to serve, in, in this case, the UU. So, um, um, you know, the inspection services and fire team will be in there working with Greg's Doors to make sure this is a safe, clean, uh, healthy environment, not only to start the season November 1 or, or very close to that, but throughout the, the winter. And, and of course, Greg's Doors will be working with the fire department, the police department to make sure, you know, collectively, we all are in a good place. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. And if I just would add, you know, because Dave and I did attend the UU congregational meeting, the response of that community was nothing short of spectacular. Mm. Uh, and I think the, uh, the generosity of spirit and the way in which they're embodying their mission wholeheartedly and, and quite unanimously is, is just something that to me is so representative of Amherst and was part of the reason I wanted to work in a community like this. It was just uh, incredibly inspiring. And so I hope that we're gonna be able to build on that momentum of these new relationships, certainly bringing along the First Baptist community as well and acknowledging their long-term commitment, but also mm -hmm. taking a, an opportunity to recognize we have an opportunity for new relationships and new ways to challenge ourselves, expand services, be more inclusive and connected within the community. So I just wanted to really call out their representation in this project. Great, thank you for adding that, Mary Beth. I think that's really important for, for the community members, especially to hear. Um, I'm gonna take a quick chance to remind the folks who are um, attending in the room. We'd love to hear from you live. If you have a question, you can do so by raising your hand in Zoom or by using the Q&A function and popping your question in there. Um, I do have some questions here that I'm going to pose to our special guests, but uh, feel free to submit your questions all along for the remaining um, session. So I have this, um, this person asking that they, they saw some changes happening in downtown. Um, I think they might be referring to some of the lanes being restriped and the lane adjustments. Can one of you talk about the changes and how it relates to the, uh, the grant that was received for those improvements? Sure, I'm happy to start. Paul may want to chime in as well, but yeah, it's a great question. And um, again, we have been working extremely hard um, and and closely with the with our our friends and colleagues at the bid in the chamber to try to do everything we can to help downtown businesses, be they retail or restaurants. So what people are seeing out here is is um, you know uh, uh, throughout the last uh, two three months we have been making adjustments. Uh, we've been hearing from the business community and trying to make adjustments to help them be uh, more successful. 
in reaching their, their clientele. And so we've done things like uh, work with the bid and chamber on getting uh, obviously the uh, areas for them to expand out into the street, uh, to have tables, uh, to have umbrellas. And most recently we added um, heaters so that they could extend their, their dining season uh, farther into the fall. And we did just get a grant uh, from the Mass Department of Transportation uh, to make some additional adjustments and some, some different adjustments in our downtown to give more space, more space for pedestrians, to make sure the pedestrians uh, uh, and diners are safer uh, with wider sidewalks and, and more area to move around. So we're trying to uh, make those adjustments as we can before winter sets in. And we're also looking ahead to say, what post pandemic, what, what, what can Amherst downtown look like? What can we do to be a more welcoming environment, um, an environment where um, businesses, restaurants are even more successful than they have been in the past? So we're really looking at the width of our sidewalk and our bike lanes to make our downtown more walkable, uh, bikeable and safe um, and, and, and uh, inviting for people to come downtown. So it's it's been great working with the bid in the chamber. We've heard a lot of, there's been really good feedback and really good dialogue with our restaurants and with our uh, downtown businesses. It's, it's challenging for them. We have to acknowledge that it has been very difficult and um, the road ahead is unclear, but we want to partner with them as best we can. So, so Dave mentioned the heaters and it seems like such a simple thing, right? Go out and go to Home Depot and buy some heaters um, and put them out so that people can sit outside. And it, because we're public, because it's procurement, because there it's commercial, because there are safety things that we're responsible for, it was pretty a pretty arduous task, and we had people driving out of state and trying to find heaters for our business, and they, we were successful. And it was like just a credit to uh, inspection services and fire and everybody who came together to make that happen. And you know, people are saying, "Well, it's going to get cold so fast," and it's like that's true. But we're also looking to the spring, so we want to have all this set up for the spring. So when we emerge from the, uh, the winter doldrums. We want people to be able to have some place to come and attend and have dinner, have a drink, be outside, have our downtown set up to ready to receive people in a safe way. So all this work, you know, people are saying you're only doing it for a few weeks, but it's really for a much longer period of time. And again, as Dave said, we're looking for long term, like maybe this is something we keep for a long time. And that's it's a bet. It's a real benefit to the town. So uh, an exciting project. I think the, the grant your your division got. Dave is like $180,000 to do this. Mm -hmm. So it's not chump change here. So that'll include planters and, and um, a number of different uh, pieces of equipment for DPW to help with, with downtown, um, as I said, safety for pedestrians and, and vehicular safety. We've got heaters now uh, in our downtown for those restaurants who wanted them. And then uh, as far south as Mission Cantina in the south and um, uh, the harp up north. So, um, and we're we're hoping to get more heaters to really extend the season. And as Paul said, um, these are now town property, and we will store them over the winter. And we hope to bring them out as soon in 2021 as restaurants would like to start serving out outdoors. Great, and and that includes. Um, we'll be putting out probably a little bit later today. Um, I'm working with one of the planners that that works. Um, and Dave's functional area to put out a little bit of an explainer video about some of those elements that were just described, mm -hmm. um, and as well as other things that the grant will um, will cover. So you can look out for that shortly. All right. Rihanna, do you mind? I mean, I've got a couple of quick updates, you know, uh, that I could uh, fill people in on, yeah. on projects. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, um, you know, despite the pandemic, um, we are, we are pushing forward on a number of different fronts and, and I'll only touch on a few things that are happening out there, but um, you know, just uh, projects that, that are exciting, they're new, they're, they're projects that have been in the pipeline for a while. Um, I think most people know that we did, uh, the town did open the new playground and spray park at Groff Park. I think it's been a, um, a huge success. Um, we, uh, we completed most of that work uh, the spray park uh, it was turned on for about a month, and uh, I think the response we got was very positive. Hundreds of children and families uh, came down there, socially distanced, and enjoyed that. 
So we look forward to 21 when we can fully open the spray park uh, in, in spring and have it be open for a number of months in 21. So kudos to all the departments uh, that worked on that from planning uh, and DPW was instrumental uh, in bringing that project uh, home. At the same time, we kicked off uh, the, the plans and, and construction is underway for a new dog park or the Emmer's dog park uh, out on Old Belchertown Road. And uh, again, DPW uh, came through the planning department and other departments and now DPW is, is really gonna uh, help work with the construction firm uh, to build that two acre dog park. And people, uh, if you're traveling uh, out that way toward Belchertown, uh, take a quick detour on Old Belchertown Road and you will see the construction uh, company uh, working there very soon. Uh, they're doing some of the early grading work or protecting some of the wetlands that are adjacent there. And that project will really take shape before the, uh, before the snow flies. When will the dog park open, do you think, Dave? Um, well, a lot of that Paul, will depend on growing grass. Um, mm. Uh, part, a good portion of the dog park is, is uh, grassed area. Another part is uh, pea stone. Um, and we're going to look to DPW to really their expertise. Uh, if we can get grass growing this fall, wonderful. Um, if not, we'll definitely have to wait through the spring. So I would see a, a later in, in 21 opening. The key is you don't want to have that brand new grass, get dogs and people out there, and then have to replant and, mm -hmm. and seed again. So um, uh, we're gonna we're gonna lean on DPW to help us make that call. The dog park task force is still very engaged. They're still raising money, uh, and I think uh, they have a meeting coming up in a week or two where we're gonna do kind of an update on the project. Uh, a lot of folks have asked about Hickory Ridge and the town's plans to acquire Hickory Ridge. Um, those plans are still moving forward. Um, in fact, uh, I was corresponding uh, with with. Uh, uh, an attorney on that project this morning. And uh, in fact, uh, we, are, we are moving forward, we hope uh, in the next uh, you know, uh, couple of months here before the new year. Um, so we're working with um, the owner of the property. Uh, as most people know, there will be a solar development out on that site. So we're coordinating uh, some of the solar elements to the site. We're also uh, making sure that the site comes to the town in the uh, absolute best condition that we require. In other words, that uh, it is a clean site. There are no uh, uh, what we call 21E uh, issues or contamination uh, on the site. Uh, so the site needs to come to us with, with a number of different conditions and the owner is uh, meeting those conditions as we speak. And then we'll go into in 21, we'll go into a, a master planning process where we'll bring together community members and committees and boards and really look at what the town wants that property to, uh, to be uh, in the end. I know I get emails, people stop me on the street, they want to be involved in that project. Uh, people talk to me about the health of the Fort River, about community gardens, about hiking trails, about affordable housing. There's a whole suite of ideas that people uh, are, are, I think are going to come, come forward in that process. So you know, it's, it's, in, it's interesting because one of the challenges that Brianna and I have been talking about is how to involve the public during the age of pandemic. And she's come up with some creative. Do you want to talk a little bit about bang the table and some of the other things you're, you're mm. looking at thinking about? Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking when, when Dave mm -hmm. was describing that project. So we are um, in the in the process right now of implementing a new public participation platform and the it's the company is called Bang the Table, but it will be- Great name. It is very good. Uh, um, so we will make it specific to Amherst. So it will be an online portal um, where there'll be any number of town initiatives and projects um, that you can go into, follow specifically the progress, see the timeline of the entire project. And along the way, we'll build in different opportunities for public participation from a very small poll yes or no to to more um, involvement. So we get that kind of ladder of engagement so people can um, express their opinion or, or collaborate in ways that they have time for in ways that they're comfortable with. So we kind of, um, we look at being on a border committee as kind of higher along that ladder, but there are a lot of other opportunities for us to um, build consensus and gain um, opinions. And so probably in the next couple of 
I would say a month and a half, we might start seeing um, that take shape and come online. And so I would imagine that the Hickory Ridge project would be a perfect um, example to, to use that and engage with our public. So there'll be more to come on that when we're ready to launch it, um, explainer videos, invitations to join. In. And we'll probably start with some sort of fun, uh, lower stakes activity in order to get people signed up and engaged through that platform. But we're very excited about it. Um, and I have a, a graduate student intern who's working with me on that project as well right now. So um, stay tuned for that. It'll be a lot of new ways to to, to connect beyond, uh, you know, sending an email or making a public comment. We want to make sure that we have a d diverse array of ways that people can connect with us. One of, one of the things it offers is you don't have to it, it mean, you don't have to show up at a certain time at a certain meeting. You can, it gives you that facility, but you can come in at any time. You know, you're feeding the baby at night and you want to check in on what's going on with this project. You can check in, you can lay, you know, put in a comment or, or vote or things like that. So, and then all the information for the project is gathered in one location. So it's, it's something we're going to try, see how it works. It's perfect timing for what we're, what we need to be doing since we're in the Zoom world anyway. Um, and people can, it, it, we think it provides more access to folks. So it's, I'm really excited about this too. Yeah, I think we'll hear from a lot of new voices who, who may not be comfortable with the, you know, the traditional format of making public comment or showing up at a meeting. We'll get to hear from some of those more reticent um, voices and give them a, a way that they feel comfortable with contributing to, mm -hmm. to our projects. So um, really excited about that. We'll probably mm -hmm. have to do a whole session on that once it's launched. I, I did want to mention also, Brianna, there's been a lot of um, focus this year uh, with COVID on, on kind of outdoor recreation, particularly mm -hmm. passive recreation. And, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of reason to, to feel optimistic as we move into 21 and hopefully get through the pandemic. But, you know, I did want to give credit. Um, our, our town staff have done a terrific job um, on our trails up at Puffer's Pond. Um, you know, in particular, Puffer's Pond, I think uh, the, the work we did up there with, with staff from various departments from, um, we, we pulled staff from, from um, LSSC, from the Senior Center, from Conservation, and from a few other departments here in Town Hall. And they did a terrific job at meeting and greeting and helping people to, to enjoy Puffer's Pond while at the same time being safe with social, social distancing. And I think you know, overall, uh, I, I heard overwhelming support for the, the impact that had, the positive impact that had on the experience out at Puffer's Pond. Um, so I think we'll kind of take that information as we look forward and how to manage the pond and manage the people who love it and use it and, and want to be there every summer. Um, you know, I think uh, in 2019, we, we worked, um, my staff worked collaboratively with DPW to redesign or reimagine the, the, and make uh, State Street one way and redo the parking. And I think that was kind of phase one. And we learned a lot about the importance of having a presence there uh, during the 2020 season. So um, I think we'll look to kind of build on that in future years because everybody loves Puffer's Pond. Can you talk a little bit about, it, it seems like it's, it's getting shallower and shallower. What's going on there? <laughs> yes, it's, it's filling in, Paul. Absolutely, yes. It is. Um, it's a. It's a natural process for an unnatural pond. Let's put it that way. It's a mill pond. So, so it's a. It's a built pond, and what happens behind any dam or a, or a pond uh, that has a, a water course entering it is that uh, sediment naturally comes down sand, um, rock, stone come down uh, soil, come down the stream, and eventually fill in the pond. So we are looking at that. We've had some studies done. We did some, some interesting work with UMass and some of their graduate uh, um, studios there to take a look at historic depths of Puffer's Pond. We know kind of uh, how much uh, the pond is filling in every year and we do need to do something about it if we wanna keep that as a, a passive recreation area. We're gonna have to dredge it. Um, we do have a little money set aside um, through the capital plan from years ago that uh, we really need to get in the permitting pathway to, to move that project forward. What I didn't understand, I didn't realize until you told me was that the last time you dredged it, you didn't truck the fill away, you just put it on a hill next to the pond and 
So it made it much more efficient and created a nice little um, parking area in addition to the pond on the north side of the pond, I think it was, right? Yeah, the north side of the pond is an old gravel pit. So in kind of a, a, an interesting twist, that gravel was mined many years ago by the Puffer family uh, for road projects and home projects throughout the valley. And my predecessor, uh, this predates me, when we dredged the pond last probably 20 odd years ago to save money uh, because a lot of a dredging project is the trucking cost. Mm -hmm. uh, we just trucked the sediment, which is all clean up uh, to the west and everyone calls that kind of the north or northwest beach, the beach on the far side of the pond, the smaller beach. And we trucked it right in there and we saved a tremendous amount of money on trucking costs. So that could be an option for um, our next dredge project up there. Hmm. Um, I did also want to give note the, the conservation staff has, as has DPW been very busy with all these storms we've gotten this summer. We've lost a lot of trees. We've lost a fair number of street trees, but I would say right now we probably have 40 to 50 down trees on trails. So anybody who's listening or who sees this, um, we know where they are. We appreciate all your, your, um, your reports, please keep them coming. We've, we've logged in where those trees are. It's just gonna take a while for my two, two person staff to get to all of those trees. Um, some of them are literally 100 foot white pines. And um, we, we, we try to clear the trail. We're not removing a, a trail out on the conservation area like you would on a, a public shade tree on the, on the common. If that went down, you have to remove everything. We try and clear the trail, move things aside so that people can use the trail for hiking, biking, running, dog walking, uh, whatever their purpose. But um, 40 to 50 trees um, is a lot and many of them are in very inaccessible places. So um, Brad uh, Borderweek and Tyler Pease are gonna be working through that this winter, trying to get those trees removed and clear all those trails. It's a big job. It is. There's some down on the trail behind my house. So I'll have to send <laughs> an email to somebody. <laughs> and then go with a chainsaw. <laughs> Um, I do want to give, we're coming up to our time here, uh, which always goes so quickly. Uh, last chance for, for any um, attendees in the room to pop in your question. Otherwise, I am going to um, allow a chance for everybody to say what they didn't get to say or any parting words. Mary Beth, you want to start? Sure. Number one, come down and vote. Early in-person voting is going on. So either drop it at uh, the town hall, you can mail it or come and do in-person voting. We're open seven days a week. Number two, challenge your views of ageism and how you view older people. Friday night, there's going to be a fantastic photography exhibit behind the Amher Cinema that we've been working with a local photographer, Isabella Delolio, um, and it's featuring Amher seniors and how we view aging and that it is also part of living and vibrancy. Mm -hmm. So challenge yourself around ageism. And then lastly, what I would say is we can't do the shelter work without you. So please feel free to contact Craig's Doors, donate. Uh, they need things like socks, razors, toothpaste, as well as financial contributions. And we're in this together. What a resilient community looks like we are defining daily. So thanks. Wow. That's impressive. Yeah. Dave, are you sure you want to go after that? <laughs> I'm not sure I can really follow that, but um, I didn't know this was the final question. No. In <laughs> short, what I would say is I really want to thank town staff um, for all of their work during 2020. It's not over yet, we realize that, but they've been doing a terrific job under, under challenging and trying uh, times. Um, and I also wanna thank you know, the public for their patience with all of, with all of the work we've been doing. Um, we, we are trying to meet as many of your needs as we possibly can. That's our jobs, we recognize that. And I think overall from DPW to fire to police, to, to the clerk's office, to accounting, um, to, to all of the, the people we serve out there, uh, as well as you know, um, you know, committees and boards. Um, uh, I just thank everybody for their patience and for sticking it out. And, and we've got a long way to go, um, but I think with patience and uh, understanding, we will get there as a town. So thank you all. Great, thank you, Dave. Paul? Yeah, my, my, my last one will be Mary Best number one, which is vote early at the Bang Center, mail in your ballot. You can also just drop off your ballot. We have three reserved parking spaces right on the Main Street side of Town Hall. You can park there for 15 minutes, jump out, um, drop your ballot into the mail, into the little box that's right there. 
that box gets ent emptied multiple times a day by the town clerk's office. So it's, it's really easy to do. So make sure you do it much better than trying to vote on election day. And we've had a lot of people taking selfies and videos of themselves mm -hmm. dropping off the ballots. So don't hesitate if you wanna, if you wanna do that, please tag us and we'll, um, we'll share the, the voting, the vote early love. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so I wanna thank everybody um, who's joining us and everybody who's watching this um, after the fact, we'll put this on our community chat playlist and we will back, be back next Thursday at noon and every Thursday um, after that, except for Thanksgiving, we won't be here then. All right, Thanks, Brianna. thank Bye. you. Thank you all.